Where do you get off talking to a lowlife like Ian Shelton, huh? You don't understand. No, you don't understand. Do you know he would sell his own grandmother's skin to increase his rag circulation? Do you know that? Frisco, try to listen. I didn't say anything to Ian Sheldon about your brother's improvement. Well, it's not because you didn't try. That's not Scorpio true. scoffed you before you even had the chance not to true. say it. It's not true. Look, I know the importance of not saying anything about your brother's improvement. Do you know why it's important? Yes. But you still don't care, do you? You'd probably do anything to get your name in the paper, wouldn't you, kid? Look, I wouldn't jeopardize your brother's life. Well, then what the hell were you trying to do? Nothing. Yeah, well, then why don't you just come out and admit it, okay? Because I didn't do anything wrong. Why don't you just come out and admit what's really bothering you? What's that? Just because you're having problems with your love life is no reason to take it out on me. Let me tell you something, Chris, okay? Will you excuse us? Oh, gladly. Orderly to the seventh floor with a wheelchair staff. Down here. Orderly to the seventh floor with a wheelchair staff. Do you know what he tried to do? No, you're wrong, because I have already talked to him. Sit. And he has convinced me that he would never have said anything to Ian, no matter what. Well, that's not what it sounded like in the paper. Because an, uh, an irresponsible hack writes an article like that? I know Shelton's responsible. Well, then, if you know that, how can you be so willing to believe what he writes about Kevin? It doesn't work both ways, you know. Yeah, you're right. I guess it doesn't make sense, does it? Ian is the villain here. It's not Kevin. All right, I jumped the gun a little. Dr. Well, Perez, report your under the circumstances. Dr. Perez, report your reality. I really can't find you. How's Tony doing? He's doing great. I took him for a ride in the um, wheelchair today. Tell you the truth, Frisco, he should be at home in no time at all. Let's just hope Shelton doesn't find out. Come on. You're assigned exclusively to the Jones story. I want you to get as close to... What's that? Where? This here, some sort of desk. That's where the truckers pick up their bills of lading. You know, I talked to a lot of those workers down at the warehouse, right? Look here. They told me that Slater spent a lot of time right here. That's the Mexican cargo area. Yeah, you're beginning to see a pattern? It's just a slight one. Well, let's see if we can't uh, darken the outline a little bit here, okay? How? I'd like to browse through this area. You think you could arrange a little bit of, of a tour for me? Yeah, I think I can get you in this evening. If we wait in Slater's office till the workers go, then we'll have the whole place to ourselves. Then we can search the desk and the Mexican cargo area. Good. You stay in the office. I'll take the risk. I don't want you getting in any trouble. Not on your life. We're going after the man who tried to kill my brother. And my friend. We're in this together. You've done enough, Felicia. Thank you. Yes, I got us into this mess. Please, this is important to me. First, you can't shut me out now. All right. You asked for it. I'll be back. Why are you so surprised? We're going, we're going to the warehouse, right? Right. Well, so here I am. Well, it's, it's too early. The workers will still be there. Well, what's the difference? We're going to wait in Slater's office, right? We'll just wait till they all clear out. Yes, but the less people around, the better. You never know what's going to happen. What about the night watchman? We'll just have to take our chances with him. You know, this is trespassing. That night watchman can get us in a lot of trouble. Especially you, considering your relationship with Donnelly, not to mention the police. I don't care. If we come up for a lead, we could find Slater in New York. There's nothing creepier than a dark warehouse. How about a cemetery at night? You're right. There's, there's Who's there? What are you doing oh, here? Sorry, we Who didn't are you? Early. My name is Felisa Cummings. You've probably seen me around here before. No, I haven't. You haven't? Well, that's strange. I work for Mr. Donnelly. Your boss? Yeah, he's my boss. Oh, well, mine too. I'm on a special assignment. I'm part of the medical ship project. Oh, sure. You know Matt Hines? Yeah. Mr. Donnelly set me up in his old office. 
Oh, I see. Mm. You can verify this if you want to with Mr. Donnelly. I'm uh, doing inventory for him, and I need to find the cargo area. If you could sew me, I, I really need someone to sew me. That would be great. <laughs> well, that, that's me. Oh, Mr. Donnelly said you'd be very helpful. Well, it's a uh, little complicated, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll get you there. Okay. You uh, follow this corridor all the way down, almost to the end. Mm -hmm. And you see a sign, a post, painted green on the right. That's when you turn left. And you go down and you jog on the first turn, go all the way down till you hit a sign. It says Bay G. Got it? Bay G, yes. Thank you very much. You bet. Mr. Donnelly said you'd help me? That was My very nice. My mother always hoped that I would so grace under pressure yeah. of what she said. You're a pretty fast talker, too. <laughs> Check out the smell. Oh. Oh. Give me the flashlight. Let's see. That's the big cargo area. Yes, right there. Okay. There it is, Bristol. Should be around the corner. Yes. Oh, no, look at this. Doesn't see anything on the map about a fence. One of those unimportant details they left out. No. There's nothing in here about it at all. Nothing. Oh, we made a big mistake. No. The import stuff back there, too. This is the spot, definitely. Behind gate? Right. Or over the fence, if we had wire cutters and could take a chance. I don't care. I just want to get in there. Maybe I could pick the lock. Oh. You could use... I got a hairpin here. No, no. Huh? I got something else. Here. Oh, good job, Frisco. Hold the line. This baby will work. Thank goodness you had the foresight to be able to bring one of those. So much for foresight. What are you? We got them. Repeat, we got them. What are you two doing here? The question is, what are they doing in this section? Uh, I thought I told you. You did. You did. He did. He did. Well, I can't believe you did this. You didn't help him. What are you talking about? Well, this man was giving us instructions on how to get to the cargo area where we keep the medical ship, and I thought this was the place. It's not. See, I uh, told you well, that this I wasn't... Got mixed up. What are you doing here at this hour anyway? Well, I had to make sure the, the equipment had arrived, and I wanted to do inventory on it, so we tried to get to this gate open. I right, thought this and was the place. You know the rest. I mean, the alarm and everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty stupid. Yeah, well, I, uh, I think you should call it a day, hmm? You yeah. have to get uh, Sean to take you down to the medical uh, loading zone tomorrow. Well, it is getting pretty late. I, you know. Well, I've, I've got the time. Don't you have any paperwork to do? Well, yes, I have lots of paperwork. Yeah, well, and uh, why don't you do the paperwork tonight, and uh, you can do the inventory check tomorrow. Uh, well, maybe I should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think you can find your way back to your office? Yes, yeah. yes, I'm sure I can. Good, good. I want to talk to you about policy. Sorry. <laughs> What a drag. My heart was beating so fast when I heard that alarm, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Come on. Hurry, I go rest. If 